keep on coming up. I'ma keep on going till I die, won't get enough. I'ma tell the bros we get the Benji on the box. I won't sell my soul, I only do it for the love and tell my soul. What's going on, everyone? It's King Tuts Pro. Welcome back to another video. Now, you guys showed so much love on my previous video that I put out a couple days ago, and that was for the LUT pack that I just created. If you guys are new to the channel and you guys are trying to level up or trying to color grade your videos really quickly, then I suggest you guys check out that video. I'll have it linked down in the description of this video. And I push play. It's going to look just like this, super clean and simple. So we're going to go to this page here, which I'll link in the description. Click on this. It's just a footage. So you're going to type in zero to get it for free. You're going to hit add to cart, type in your email. This will send the transition to your email. You download it. It's going to be in a zip file. Unzip the file and then inside that folder should be that clip here. Here we go. So money blur transition and it's going to be this clip here as you can see and you're going to import that. So click import all. You're going to select the clip and you're going to drag it above your media or anywhere you want to add that transition to and you're going to go to here and click and drag that above your video and you're done. So now if you push play all you got to do. So it's that simple. Let's say you want to make it go a little bit faster. Right now it's about three seconds long. Press command R and you're going to go over to this little end piece. And you're going to click and drag that inwards to make it go faster. So if I go kind of like this here and I push play, it'll kind of go through a little bit quicker. And if I drag this in, you know, about halfway, it'll fall in a lot faster. All right, guys, so the second transition is going to be a sliding background transition. So if I push play, we're going to be creating something that looks like this. What you're going to do is you're going to hold option to make a copy. So hold option and drag directly upwards to make a copy. You're going to move this to the left. So we're going to zoom in here. This is how long this transition is going to last. So click and drag this right in front of that clip there and we can delete the rest. Hold option again and, and drag upwards to make a copy. Disable the top video clip by pressing V on your keyboard. Select the bottom clip. You're going to move the playhead at the beginning. You're going to go over to transform and you're going to go to the keyframe over here at the top left to add a keyframe. So add a keyframe there. Move the playhead to the end of that uh, first clip here in the inspector tab right here. You're going to go over to position and you're going to go to X and you're going to drag this all the way to the right and you should see a red line start to appear meaning that it's going to be animated. Just drag it off the screen until it's completely out of the screen. So now it should animate like this and don't worry about the speed. We can change that always in the end. So go to effects. You're going to go to blur, go to directional blur and add that onto that bottom clip here. Move the plate at the beginning, go to directional, move the amount to zero, add a keyframe and go about to the same position here. So the end of that first clip, drag this all the way to say 50. Uh, so about halfway, we can increase this even more. We're going to re-enable the top clip by pressing V and we're going to go to the masks here in the effects browser go to draw mask and drag the mask on top of that clip and you're gonna pretty much mask out your subject perfect so now if we disable the bottom clip you can see that it is a mask indeed we do need to create some keyframes to so go over to the draw mask on that first clip, we're going to go over to control points and you're going to add a keyframe. Then you're going to go to about here, back on the draw mask and reposition those so that it stays with our subject here so it doesn't move too much. So once we're happy with the control points, we're then going to go to the feather and we're going to increase this. So bump this up to feather it outwards or inwards if you want to feather it inwards. I'm going to feather it outwards a little bit. And with the mask selected, what you're going to do is go to transform. You're going to add a keyframe. Once the background is about halfway of the main video here, so this whole entire frame, the background is like around the center. You're going to drag the draw mask, which is the top clip, go to scale all, and you're going to increase this. So just bump this up just like that. Perfect. Go one frame to the right, press once on the arrow key, and you're going to drag the X axis all the way to the right so that our subject is completely out of the frame. Sorry if it's super slow. I have a lot of apps open in the background. So now if I push play, it'll look just like that. We're going to uh, right click on that top video, go to show video animation. And instead of it being one frame to the right where it completely goes out of frame, we're actually going to drag this all the way out a little bit. So it's a bit slower. So it kind of animates a lot slower like that. And I push play. Let's move on to the third transition. 
All right, guys. So the third transition is a very simple uh, transition, and honestly, you don't really need any effects at all. When you go out to shoot your video, you want to make sure that you're shooting your subject in a similar scene. So if I push play, it's gonna look something like that. It looks so similar as you can see. So if I push play. Um, he kind of tilts his head and he's in a completely different scene. So for this to work, you do need two different shots, two completely different shots of the same subject, kind of posing in the same uh, manner. What you're going to do is, of course, I already have this here. So say we're going to be working with, you know, right here where he's kind of standing in the middle. What we can do is select the first clip, which is this one here, and I'm going to split it right about here or wherever I think we can find another clip that kind of matches this same scene. So if we go through with this video here, we can probably do this one here. So if I push command B, we can start the next clip here or the next scene. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click and drag this above our media. So wherever we think we can match it, maybe about here. So we're gonna drag that second clip above and the clip above, we're going to decrease the opacity so we can see the clip beneath it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the transform tool and we're gonna scale this up. So just go to scale all and bring this up and you're gonna match him in the same spot as you can see. So this clip here is the top clip and the video beneath it is the well the clip beneath the top clip so if we kind of move this and position it as close as we can i think that looks pretty good and once we're there just bring up the opacity so now if i push play it'll look just like that so with this one what i did is pretty much the same exact thing so as you just seen right now we're going to use this shot here so find a similar shot where he's kind of tilting his head you press command b and then this is a different shot all right a different scene but he's posing the same exact way so you just you know delete whatever is in between that and when you push play it'll look just like that and of course you will have to scale one clip or the other to match so say the second shot we want to increase or match the clip to the left you're going to click and drag this below one frame to the left you're going to select the top clip and you can scale it up, but first decrease the opacity and go to transform. And you can see I've already scaled this up. So this is really the, if I reset this, this is the original clip. So what I did is I just went to transform, I decreased the opacity, and this is the clip on the left. We're just gonna increase the scale. So just bring this up and try and match it as close as you can. I like to go with their face because it matches the most. So I'm gonna increase the opacity, click done. And now if I go back and push play, It'll look just like that. And you can move this back into frame and it looks just like that. Perfect of a transition. And let's move on to the fourth transition. All right, guys, so the fourth transition is going to be this super cool, it's like a sliding morph transition. So if I push play, it's gonna look something like this. And it's relatively easy to do. It only takes a couple of keyframing to do this. So place your second shot right before the first clip that you wanna to transition to. So this is gonna be our main clip. So at the very beginning, we're gonna use whatever is in this uh, frame as a transition. So we're gonna be using Kid Leroy as our uh, main subject. So we're gonna go over to edit, at the top, we're going to go down to add freeze frame, select the middle clip, which is just this still image, drag it up and move it to the left and trim the end to the middle of both of those clips. And then make sure that you have the desired length that you want it to be. Ideally, you want this to be relatively quick here. So something like this is cool. Go over to the effects tab and you're going to go down to the masks. You're going to go to draw mask and drag that onto your clip. You're going to go onto your draw mask and just make a selection of your subject. All right, so once you finish off on that first point, it's gonna look something like this, and you go back to fit, and if you want, you could add a feather to this so you can feather out the edges so it's a little bit better. What you're gonna do now is move the playhead at the beginning, go over to the transform here, so you can see transform, crop, and distort. So you're gonna go over to the left and click on transform. You're gonna go zoom out of the timeline, so I'm gonna go about 25%. I'm going to first scale this up, okay? We haven't added any keyframes yet, so we're gonna scale this up quite a bit, and I'm gonna move this to the left because I want this to go in from the left. It's gonna go over to the right, and then it's gonna go back into the original uh, position that it was. So we're gonna add a keyframe here. So click add keyframe there, and this will add it to the full entire transform settings. And under distort, we're gonna have to do this as well. So add a keyframe next to distort on all of those keyframes. We're gonna go ahead and disable the distort because if you have this enabled, it will, you won't be able to see your image. So just make sure that's unchecked. And we're gonna go about, about halfway, and we're gonna move the X 
position over to the right. So just move this to about here maybe. And then from there, what we're going to do is go one frame over to the right. And then now that we have that, we're gonna just move this back into the original position. So under position X and Y, type in zero. For X, type in zero for Y. And then for scale, we're gonna type in 100% and click enter. If you think this part is too fast, right click on the video and go to show video animation and extend this outwards. From here, we might as well do it again. So on X axis, we're gonna type in zero, Y zero, and for scale 100%, press enter. That way it's a bit smoother. As you can see, if I push play, it's coming in from the left. We added a keyframe here, where, which is where it stops. And then the, the third frame is going to be the original scale. So 0, 0, 100% under transform. So once we have that set, now we're going to go over to the distortion. So we're going to go and click on this down arrow, click distort. And under distort, we're going to enable this and make sure we can see it. So go a couple of frames in. And once it's there, we're going to move the top piece here, hold shift. So it doesn't move left and right. We might as well do this one as well. So we're just really playing around with this as well. And if we need to scale this up even more, we definitely can. And then we're gonna go about here. So from this point, we're gonna add some more keyframes. You can also just hit this little plus icon and this will add it to all of them. And you're gonna go one frame over to the right again, all the way till where it finishes, which is about here. And then you're gonna type in under all these values to type in zero. So now when we go back and we click done, it'll look like this. So now that you have that, we're gonna add the um, Kind of blur effect so we're gonna go over to your effects blur and directional blur and add that onto your clip so now it'll look a little bit more dynamic so we're gonna increase its blur so if i push play it'll look just like that if you want it to be a bit more dramatic you can of course increase it even more also to finish off this effect what i want to do is add a really cool LUT. so as you can see there's not really much of a color grade on this shot here so I'm gonna go over to effects, I'm gonna go to color, and I'm gonna go over to custom LUT. And you should have this on 10.4.7 and above, I believe. So once you have the LUT enabled, you can select any of these. Now these are the ones that I created. I created this LUT. If you wanna buy this, link is in the description and it completely changes the look of your video as you can see. So before and after, cruising is a really cool, kind of ASAP, uh, rocky music video vibe going on here. So this is a before. And after, we have Eucalypto, which is one of my favorite ones by far. Uh, we have Solorium, Ticino Blue. We have Sky Magenta. If you wanna buy it, link in the description. So let's move on to the fifth transition. All right, guys, so this is another really easy transition. And if I push play, it's gonna look something like this. And I guess you can call this more of a spotlight transition. It's very subtle and it's very clean and easy to do. And I'm sure you can do this in Premiere Pro as well with a similar shape element or overlay that they have. So you're gonna have your first scene here and then your next shot is gonna be this one. So what you wanna do is you wanna go over to the titles and generators, go down to generators, go over to the elements and you're gonna find the shapes element. So drag that above your timeline. And then from there, what you're going to do is go over to the inspector tab, which is this window here. Go over to the parameters for the shape and for shape, you can do circle, you can do square, you can do diamond if you really want to. However, I'm gonna go with circle. We don't want an outline, but we do want the fill color to be black. So move this over to black and that's all you gotta do. So now that once you're there, you're gonna go over to the video inspector tab here and move the shape at the very beginning. And we're gonna increase its scale to something like this. So I'm gonna trim this so it matches the full length and make sure you make another cut in between these clips there. So you're gonna go over to blend mode and you're gonna change this to stencil alpha. We're gonna go over to the effects. We're gonna to go to blur and we're gonna to go to focus blur and we're gonna go over to amount. We can increase the amount or you can bring it in. So I'm gonna go something like that. We can make it softer, which is what I'm gonna do here. So what I wanna do is I want to start this off big. So at the very beginning of your first clip on the first shape, you're going to start this off so that the vignetting is kind of out of the shot completely add a keyframe and go about, I don't know, about here maybe, and then bring this down. So go to scale all and bring this down to the size that you want. If you want it to be like this or like this, or maybe something like this is good here. So now if I push play, it'll look something like that. It'll stay on screen for a little bit. So once you have those keyframes, it should look something like this. And then from here, we're gonna go about a couple of frames, I don't know, seven frames or so. 
Go to position and add a keyframe and go to the end of that clip. Go one frame to the left and then under X, which controls left and right, as you can see, we're gonna drag this over to the right side of the screen. So it shows completely black. So now if I push play, it'll look like that. And now all we're gonna do is just do the same exact thing. So I'm gonna delete the second sh uh, shape actually, and then I'm just gonna make a copy. So hold option and drag it to the right. So what we're gonna do though, is we're gonna reset the transform settings here. And then under scale all, make sure you have playhead at the very beginning. And we're gonna start this off kind of big as well. So something like that. So scale is fine. And then transform position, you're gonna add a keyframe at the beginning. We're gonna to go to the X axis and move this off screen. So it goes from the left. And then we're gonna go a couple of frames in like so, and then type in zero and press enter. So now if I push play, it'll look like it's still going uh, to the sh second shot, if that makes sense. And this one's a little slow, so I'm gonna go over to show video animation. I'm gonna kind of move this in a little bit so it matches the speed of the first shape. And there you go. Once it finishes uh, moving, which is about here, is where it stops. We're gonna go one frame over to the right again. You're gonna add a keyframe under scale all, and then you're gonna go more frames over and then just drag the scale all the way up. So now it should look something like this. So if I push play, but uh, yeah, so uh, let's move on to the next transition. All right guys, so this next transition is one of my favorite ones because it uses the Luma key uh, or the Luma keyer effect for this really cool transition. So if I push play, this is my take on the original transition. So as you can see, it fades the original video and it makes it as uh, kind of a see-through clip. Now for this to work, you have to have a shot where there's a lot of contrast, so you can clearly see the, you know, the edges of our subject. Move the playhead at the beginning, go to the effects, go to King, and go to Luma Keyer, and add that onto your video. Then from there, what you're going to do is, uh, it might look a little bit different between this shot and this one because we have this enabled. You could, of course, move it to the left, right? So I'm gonna move the um, bottom part to the left here. I'm going to add a keyframe and I'm going to go about, I don't know, here maybe. And I'm going to bring the slider from the left side over to the right. So we're going to bring the shadows over to the right so it makes it completely black. And then we're going to bring the highlights over to the shadows. It should bring the highlights and make them a lot brighter, almost white completely. Go back to where it stops here. It's better to just go to transform and add a keyframe right here, which adds it to everything, just in case you forget. Go to the very end, one frame to the left, and just scale this up all the way and move this down to, say, his head. So, or anywhere, really, just make sure that the frame here covers the entire, or the video covers the entire frame, okay? Um, if you don't have the transparency grid, just make sure no white parts are showing. Um, so if we enable the transparency grid, that looks good there. And I click done. So now it should look something like this. If I push play, it'll go like that. It'll go by very fast. So then drag the second shot over to the bottom of the clip here. And I push play, it'll look like that. And I can move it over on the bottom completely. So it starts a lot sooner. Personally, I like it where it starts kind of like about halfway. I think it looks the best. Yeah, that's pretty much the transition. It's very, very straightforward and simple to do. If you guys like this video, be sure to comment down below. Any other video ideas, subscribe and turn on the bell notification. But until then, take care.